No, I'm okay. All right, so yesterday while we were discussing this, we stopped at uh, what the request contains and what the response contains, right? After, uh, so we'll start our discussion from there. Uh, I just had one question, Summit. Um, mm -hmm. the, the assertion consumer service URL um what is that again so that is the url of the application so okay. where okta will send the response okay so like office365.com would be yeah country. it can be office365.com or office365.com slash login anything where Office 365 is capable of receiving the response. OK. So this is just for receiving and not for giving, like not responding back to the application, right? Or is it for both? It is the application URL. Okay. ACS URL belongs to the application, so it receives the response from Okta. OK, so it's part of the request and the response. It is included in the request. So see, you have to read the request as in. I am the application. I want the response to be sent to the ACS URL. And I am requesting to the SSO URL. If I, okay, let's say that if you want me to transfer some amount to your bank account, right? So you would send me a message, write a request, and you will share your account number, correct? Yes. So your account number is the ACS you are, because that is the recipient who would be finally receiving the amount. Right. So once the authentication is done by Okta, when Okta generates a response, they, somebody has to receive this response. This response will be received by the assertion consumer service URL, the ACS URL. And this ACS URL belongs to the application itself. It does not belong to Okta. It is a part of application. Mm, OK, OK, I get it now. Yeah. There is one more component which I did not include yesterday. It is called as certificate. It is an optional component. It will be in both request and response. So what is the use case of certificate? Any idea? Or what do you know about certificate? It's not the certificate which you get when you uh, graduate or something, right? This is a different certificate we're talking about. Is it something to do with signature? Is it to show that that application, specific application is what's, what's sending the um, request? Yes. Yes, so it is for security um, and different needs for signature, okay? So once a certificate is included either in the request or response, that gives or uh, that, that tells or validates itself that it is coming from a genuine source because we can verify the signature from this certificate. So let's say every application or Okta also will have two certificates. One is private certificate and one is public certificate. 
So what Okta will do is Okta will share the public certificate with application and similarly application will share its public certificate with Okta. So when application makes a request, application can sign the request using its private certificate. And when this uh, this uh, request is received by Okta, Okta can use the public certificate of the application and can verify the signature. Similarly, when Okta generates a response, Okta can also sign the request using its private certificate. And when this response is received by the application's ACS URL, it can also use the public certificate of Okta and can validate the signature. Correct. So it's just as so it gives us authenticity that this request was originated from the right application. And similarly, it gives authenticity that the response is also generated from the right Okta tenant. Is it clear? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, yesterday, uh, somebody asked a question that how would application know what Okta URL to call and how will Okta know uh, where to send the response? So we discussed that it is it is shared at the time of integration. So when you onboard an app or only integrate an app with Okta, you have to share applications information to Okta and Okta's information to the application. Now, how would we share this information? So both application and Okta uh, will generate a file called metadata. OK, that metadata file will have information about each other. So let me like show you one metadata. So, so this is a metadata. It is Salesforce metadata for your information, but this is a file which has been generated by Salesforce and this file will be shared to Okta or, or application team will be sharing with the Okta administrator, which is you in this case. And this has information about the application. What information we need about the application? We need the entity ID. So if you look at the first line, you have this value called entity ID, and this is the exact value of entity ID. So whenever an app makes a request, it provides its entity ID in the request. So whenever Salesforce will make a request, it will include this entity ID in, in the request. In that case, when Okta sees this value, it knows Salesforce is making a request. OK, then this is a certificate which we were talking about. This is a signature certificate. Uh, it also has the assertion consumer service URL, which which is needed for Okta to send the response to this location, right? So in the assertion consumer service, you have a property called location and it is an URL. So you will also provide this information to Okta. So Okta got three information. One, entity ID, second, certificate, and third is the location where uh, ACS location where it can send the response once user authentication is successful. Similarly, Okta will also generate a file like this called metadata and we would have entity ID similar to what you have for Salesforce. This instead of being salesforce.com, it will be one of the Octa's URL or Octa's value. You will see the signatures or certificates, and then you will have single sign on URL. Remember from this diagram, when application makes a request, application makes a request to Octa's single sign on URL, SSO URL, right? So instead of having an ACS URL in the metadata, they will have single sign on URL. So let me find one Octa metadata for you.
yeah this is an octa metadata so if you see there is an entity id and yesterday we discussed entity id can be a url can be a string it's just a way to uniquely identify an app or an identity provider so it does not always have to be a url so if you see for salesforce it was a url but for octa it is some random values right then you have certificate this is octa's public certificate and then you have single sign-on service and again you you will always be using the location parameter of this attribute single sign-on service and this is the single sign-on url for octa where salesforce can make a request Any question? No, no. Uh, will we be using this um, throughout our work? Or yes, this, this yeah. you will be using it when you are adding Salesforce integration with Okta or any application integration with Okta, right? So you see that there will be two files, one which the app needs to provide and another which Okta has to provide. So you will share this Octa's information to the application team, Salesforce team, and Salesforce team will share you this information. This file, which you see, is called a metadata file, uh, or you can say as single sign-on metadata or just metadata. It's an XML format, so uh, do not worry about everything here. You just focus on the few important things which is needed, which is entity ID certificate and the ACS URL. Similarly, for IDP metadata, we have entity ID certificate and single sign on URLs. Got it. And how would you know this metadata is from Okta? You can know this metadata is from Okta. Because if you see below entity descriptor, it says IDP SSO descriptor, right? So this confirms it is an IDP metadata. And who is identity provider? IDP stands for identity provider, okay? So who is identity provider in our scenario? It is Okta. And for Salesforce, you will see it's SP SSO descriptor. So that means service provider. And who is service provider? An application, which is Salesforce. This is one. Second is, if you see assertion consumer service in the metadata, that means it's a SP metadata because an IDP does not have assertion consumer service. IDP generates assertion, which is consumed by a service provider. So always a service provider metadata would have a ACS URL. And whenever you see a single sign on service, that means it's an IDP metadata because uh, application does not have a single sign on service. An application has to consume the assertion sent by the identity provider. Uh, sorry, um, yeah, IDP would not have assertion consumer service because IDP has to send the assertion to the SP, which can be consumed by the ACS. So it will have a single sign on service location. So these are the two key points to identify if this is an identity provider metadata or a SP provider metadata. So if it's an identity provider metadata, you will share this with the application team. And if it's SP provider metadata, then you will share this with Okta team, which is you yourself. Cool, any question? No. And remember, for each application, this will be one time activity. OK, you will not do this daily, right? Yeah, for if you're doing if you're adding new applications every day, then you will be doing for those applications. But for one application, this will be a one time activity. We only integrated application once, then we daily use it for authentication. Is there like a way to do it automatically without us having to do it manually like this? When you say automatically, like what do you refer to as automatic? <laughs> like um, it just like automatically sends the request or gives um, this URL to whichever apps that are asking for it. How will it do that? 
how will my doctor know that in my organization I want to use Salesforce or Office 365? With the click of a button. With the click of a button, but uh, OK, so Okta supports 9000 plus application, right? And definitely. Every organization is not going to use 9000 application. So it is very impossible for Okta to decide whether your organization is going to use a specific application. So no. And until you share these information with each other application and Okta, they don't know each other, right? So at that point of time, there is no trust. So how would Okta be able to provide the information to application and application can provide the uh, information to Okta when there is no trust between them? I understand. So that's why we have to do this integration. It is also called federation or we have to do this trust building once. Once it is done, then application knows how to authenticate using Okta, where to make a request and what to include in the request. And similarly, Okta knows where to send this information after authentication is successful, what to include in the uh, response and so on. So like this XML sheet that we're seeing, would something like this already, like in the app integration library, would this already be done? Like in our tenant, if we go into app integration library, uh -huh. uh, would we be able to like select, you know, select like say Salesforce and then provide our Salesforce URL for like our company or whatever? Yes. Um, and and then for the custom ones, we would have to make this XML. Even for your application library, you will also get this XML. All right. And then what fields would we be? We would be just doing like um, like plugging in our values into whatever fields like authentic authentication request sign true equals true. And then like binding, we would provide this information. We would provide only three information to each other. One is this, the location. It can be a single sign-on location or ACS location, certificate, and the entity ID. Okay. This value, right? Location. Yeah. Certificate. The other other thing, whether you want to have this true or false, that you can definitely define in Okta and the application both, but that's that would be like in the advanced topic, which we will not cover. So definitely you can control whether you want to have a signed assertion or not, whether you want to encrypt the assertion that is like, but before that, uh, you only need to provide these three information to complete your integration. Okay. So, this is a standard SAML orientation wherein what information you need to share and how you share this information. So this is a file which you share. But what Okta does is, as he was talking about application library, right, which is called as Okta Integration Network or OIN in short form. Okta has this uh, integration network with 8000 plus applications and Okta had made it easy for you to configure an application without providing all of these information, right? So what Okta has done is Okta has already worked with these vendors, software vendors, and Okta knows the common information uh, which, which is true for all organizations. So if you're using Salesforce, then Okta knows every organization's Salesforce will end with my.salesforce.com. It knows that every organization's ACS URL can be ending with my.salesforce.com. So what Okta will ask you is what is the value which is previous then my.salesforce.com, right? Or the prefix of your Salesforce URL. So you only need to enter this and Okta will take care of remaining other information, right? So the, the and this information requirement will be different for each application. 
So it depends upon what common information lies between org to org and that information where you don't need to share other variable information you have to share and, th and that's why it is different for each application. So for some application you might see when you're using an application library that you are you, you need to provide the login URL of the application. For some you might not need to provide any information. Octa just knows what to use. And uh, in the application side, you definitely need to provide Octa's information there. Uh, or, or upload this file which Octa generates, right? And then you complete the integration. But let's say Octa does not have an application library. In that case, you will need to provide each and every information which I have told you, which is mostly three information to each other and then complete the integration. So um, everyone has their Salesforce tenant, which we discussed earlier in the prerequisites. Um, I think I. I think it was part of the prerequisite to sign up for Salesforce developer account, correct? Yeah, that's done. Okay. So if you have your Salesforce URL, you can log in and we will integrate Salesforce with Okta today. So let me know once you see this screen when you log into Salesforce. Yeah, I'm there. Okay. How about others? Um, Almost, they're signing in. Same here. I'm in. Sorry, I don't know what one second. Okay, I'm there. Everyone's there? Yes. Yeah. All right. So let's first look at Okta site configuration. Okay. So log into your Okta, 
go to application applications and uh, un assume there is no application library okay so what we would do is in order to integrate an application we click on this button called create app integration then it will ask us to select what protocol we want to use to integrate this application and uh, we discussed right the two protocol which is uh, very famous for single sign on is saml and oidc and currently we are learning saml so we would be selecting saml 2.0 and click on next so you will need to provide your application's name which application are we integrating today we are integrating salesforce so we will provide salesforce as a name you can name this anything it does not matter it will not impact your single sign on as a process so whatever you want to call it you can call it so app name is salesforce so i will better call it salesforce and click on next now in the saml settings you will need to provide information about your application so it is asking you to provide so for Okta, this is very tricky, okay? Okta will call this as a single sign-on URL, but basically what Okta is asking you to provide is the ACS URL of the application. So if you go to this helper icon, you can see it says the location where SAML assertion is sent with HTTP post. This is often referred to as SAML assertion consumer service URL. So you need to find the ACS URL of your application and provide that information here. Second option which you need to provide is the entity ID of your application. So it says service provider entity ID, or which is also an audience when, this, when the response is sent from Okta. Do not worry about relay state and other information. So you need first we need to focus on these two information which we need to provide and then we'll move and see what other informations are now how do we get these information like acs url or entity id from our salesforce so for that we need to provide octa's information first to salesforce otherwise salesforce is not going to provide us with that information so what we will do is we will scroll down and we will i think we can still save it let's try no okay okay so what we will do is we will provide some dummy information okay as of now it whether this url exists does not exist does not matter as of now you can provide some dummy information sorry and same you can copy for entity id and just click on next and save this connection in octa So um, uh, this last page, which you're seeing where I selected, I am an Okta, Okta customer adding an internal app, and this is an internal app. The reason Okta is asking you is, so Okta has 8,000 plus application in the library. So Okta is asking you that why you are not using the library application and doing a custom integration. So I'm just providing a feedback to Okta that this is an application which we have developed on our own, and that's why we are not using the library. And we are just completing the integration for now. Now, once the application is integrated in Okta side, although we have not provided the real information, we have just used our dummy information, the integration is complete from Okta side of it, and Okta will provide us with the metadata. How we can see that metadata is, if you go to your SAML signing certificate, right, you will see there would be one certificate which is active. So you need to click on actions beside that active certificate, and click on view IDP metadata. So this generates a XML file, which we were looking before, right? And this is Octa's uh, uh, metadata because you can see this is a IDP SSO descriptor. So this metadata belongs to an identity provider, which is Octa. And it also has single sign-on service location. So this has every information about our Okta tenant, which Salesforce need to be integrated. 
So what we will do is we, we can save this file by right clicking in, in the blank area and click on save. And you can name this anything, but please make sure you're saving this as a XML document. So I can say Octa metadata for Salesforce. And I can save it as XML. Now I will need to go to my Salesforce. If you are on this page, then you should be able to click on the search box and type single sign on or just type single and you can see single sign on settings coming up here on the screen. So you click on single sign on settings and you will get to this page. You might not have these two, but you will have a page similar to this. What you need to do is you will need to click on new from metadata file. So what we are saying is we want to create or we want to add an identity provider to this Salesforce instance and we want to share the information using a file which is given to us by Okta. So we'll oh. click on new. Mm -hmm. How did you get to that single sign on settings? Oh. You in so, you want to set up? Yeah, in setup, if you look for single, you will see single sign on settings. If you click on this, you will have a page like that. Okay. So I will select new from metadata file. And I will have an option to upload this file, which I got from Okta. So here is a file which I downloaded and I can click on create. So once I click on create, Salesforce will be able to read this XML file and auto populate the information on its own. So it, it is able to identify what information is needed and should be able to capture those information. So it has captured the certificate. It has captured the entity ID. It has captured uh, the SSO URL of the Okta and so on, right? You can then name this as Okta or Okta training. I'll name it as Okta training. You can just name it as Okta for your reference. And I will also change the API name similar to my IDP name, Okta training. And I can click on save. I'll not change anything else here. Just click on save. Now I have added an identity provider to this Salesforce. So we did two step. One, we added the application in Okta, which is Salesforce. And in Salesforce, we added Okta as an identity provider using the metadata which was given to us from Okta. Now, once we have done this configuration in Salesforce, we have an option to download the metadata from Salesforce. So this metadata which we will download now will have Salesforce information. So if I click on download metadata, it downloaded one file, SAML SP. I will just rename it so that I know it's from today and not from previous batches. This renaming is not required for you. I'm just removing it so I can understand it's a current file. Okay. Now I'll go back to my Okta where I did the application configuration and I will go to the general settings of the application. If you have moved away into any other pages in Okta, then you can go to application. And here you will see the list of all the application which you have added. Currently we have added only one application Salesforce. So you'll see Salesforce here. You can click on it and you can then go to general setting of Salesforce. And if you scroll down, then you have SAML settings. So you need to click on edit for SAML settings. Click on next. And now we need to provide real information about the Salesforce on this page. 
so we will uh, open this metadata or wherever we have downloaded we will open the metadata here on the browser and we will copy the entity id of salesforce and we'll replace this value sorry we'll replace this value with the entity id we just copied from this metadata then we will copy the assertion consumer service location so i will copy this value from the location and i will replace this information in this box okay and i can scroll down to the bottom and click on next and i can leave the feedback as it is that why i'm doing this custom integration and click on finish hey sumit mine my xml download looks completely different it doesn't i'm not sure if it's the format or what but can i just show you on my screen real quick yeah. so this is what i see from that download okay so can you open this uh, on this is xml right can you try to open this in Safari? Uh, like right click on that file and click on open with Safari if you have that option. So you are only seeing the certificates, it's not able to parse it. Okay. I can try again. Um... So, or, or you have you have Chrome, right? So you can also try to open with Chrome. Okay. Chrome has inbuilt XML parser. Okay, that looks a lot better. And then you grabbed the entity ID. This, or right? Here. No, that is not the entity ID. No, that is not entity ID. Entity ID, it's written entity ID equals two. I see it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Now it it ends within the quotation itself. No, you you are going to this other properties as well. No, no, it it ends with salesforce dot right. com. Oh yeah. Correct. Do so this is a value you need to copy as entity ID. Do you have to include the quotations or no? No. Where did you? You uh, you will need to put the entity ID here in the SP entity ID field, which is the second one. And then, and then you need to copy the assertion consumer service URL and put it in the first box. It should already be open, right? Um, I think I oh, it was open. Assertion consumer, assertion consumer services. You have to copy the location property, not this. Oh. The location property. Yes. And you have to put that in the first field, which says single sign on URL. So now you can scroll and click on next and finish. Okay. So now both Okta and Salesforce, they have the real information about each other, right? But our integ uh, integration is yet not complete. Especially for you, for me it is completed, but for you it's not. So you need to go to your Salesforce and again go to single sign on settings. 
and you need to click on edit at the top here now. Then please make sure you have this checkbox called salmon enabled checked. If not, then check it and click on save. Once this is done, then in this search box, you will need to look for domain. OK. And click on domains. Uh, sorry, not domain. Click on my domain. Now you will see a page like this with domain settings. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you will see authentication configuration. So you need to click on edit. And you will need to tell Salesforce that you want to use Okta training as an authentication service, right? And you can click on save. For, uh, Okta training is a name which I provided. I'm not sure what name did you provide, so you have to select accordingly. And now finally, the integration is completed. Now, once the integration is completed, you will need to let Okta know which users can access this application. So for that, we can go to assignment tab of the application. Again, if you're not in this application, we have moved away from the screen. You can go to applications. And you can select your application. And you can go to assignment tab. Click on assign. Two people. And you can assign this to one of the user and click on done. So now only this user has access to Salesforce. But just because you have assigned this application to this user does not mean that this user would 100% have access to this application. This user's account should also exist in the application. So we need to verify whether this user is existing in the application or not. So you, you will need to go to Salesforce, which is our application again. And in this box, you need to search for users. And you need to go to users. And you should be able to see a user with the username. So whatever user you have assigned, this value should match with one of the user in here. So for me, it matches. If you have created your Salesforce account with a different email and Okta with another email, then you will, it will not match for you. In that case, you have to create a user by clicking on new user and provide the same email address which you have here in Okta for your user and provide the values. So let's say some math demo and whatever email address you have used, let's say for example, so much demo at tlc.com and username, it will auto populate as email address itself. And then don't worry about the rows and all, or let's say you give uh any role and keep the license as platform user standard platform user and make sure the active box is checked it is and you can then save this this step is only required if your user email address in octa does not match with the the user already existing in your salesforce username. Let me know once everyone has completed this part. I'm done. Sorry. Oh, I was able to complete it. So once you complete it, you click on your profile icon 
at the top right and log out from Salesforce. Similarly, log out from your Okta so that we can see an end to end process. Uh, you will need to go to the dedicated URL given by Salesforce. So for me, the dedicated URL, I can find it from my metadata. So you can open your metadata, which is generated by Salesforce. You can copy this entity ID yeah, for Salesforce. This is this step is only for Salesforce, not for any other application. For Salesforce, your login URL and entity ID is same. And you can paste that in the browser. You will not see Okta login screen, definitely. You would be seeing a Salesforce login screen, but you will see an option at the bottom of username and password to use Okta for authentication. You will need to click on that. Mm -hmm. I see the Okta login screen. You see the Okta login screen? Yeah. It brought me to the, the dev of my Okta tenant. Okay. How about others? I missed a step in the beginning, so I didn't want to hold you up, so I'm just watching you. Okay. Yeah, same with me. I'm going to just uh, review the recording and then um, along with it. Okay. Okay, so in case if you do not see this Okta login screen, if you see a Salesforce login screen, then you must have a button at the bottom where it says login using Okta training or Okta. You need to click on that and then you will see a log, uh, Okta login page like this. So remember, we, we went to Salesforce and Salesforce has sent us to Okta, which is our Okta tenant. And we can now log in using our credentials to Okta. Now, once the, the login is successful in Okta, you will see you automatically got redirected to Salesforce and you are a logged in user. So Salesforce has recognized the username and you are able to access its services. So we never logged in directly in Salesforce using the Salesforce credentials like earlier. We now logged into Salesforce using Okta, and this is called single sign on. Were you able to log in? Fun? So I tried to log in with my credentials, and it told me that I do not have access to the application. And then the Can other you assign. The the other user that I assigned it to, um, I forgot what I set the password to, so I'm logging into my Okta tenant and then resetting his password so I can okay. log in. I'm sorry. 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 I'm sorry for holding everybody up. No, no problem. Uh, anyway, I'm not starting a new topic. So, so I think uh, for both of you, you can you would review the video and complete the stack. And for others who couldn't join today, they will definitely need to go through the video and complete the step. Yeah, I'll definitely review it. Oh. Um, also, did you inform them about next week? Yeah, he sent us an email that um, we only have class on Monday. No, we will not have a class on Monday. Oh, so the whole week we don't have class? Correct. Um, Summit? 
Can I share <laughs> the screen? I did the integration like we said, but I'm getting the error user is not assigned to this application. Video screen. Let's see. All right. So, this bigger. And then I can go back to Salesforce. Oh. So, this was the user that I used, and it shows Salesforce right here as the application assigned to him. But then when I try to sign in, it says user is not assigned to this application. Okay. Um, is this the login page uh, from previously when this user was not assigned? Or, uh, or did you refresh? No, uh, I can I can refresh real quick. Okay, now can you uh, put in the yeah, so can now can you put in the username and password? And click on sign in. Six seven five. Yeah. Okay, do one thing. Close this page. Grab that sample. Yeah, grab that login URL again and paste it. User is not assigned to this application. Okay. Hold on. Can you refresh that the previous tab? Yeah. Can you go to the previous tab? This one? Oh, previous tab? Yeah, the Octa one where you were logged in as an administrator. Mm -hmm. Can you refresh this? Okay, so I think you will need to try um, incognito browser because in the same browser you're logged in as Irfan Kidby and you're trying to log in as Actually, Joe. So I'll remove this. Yeah, this was actually doing that to me too. Um, yesterday, I think it was, and then I just had to delete my history and uh, retry again. And it was. Oh no! What capitalized? Unable to say is that possible. Okay, I can change the password again. The password are you sure you oh this is not activated, that's why. Copy the temporary password. Try to log in with this password. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing even a single sign on first, you will need to log into Okta with this password and change your password. Okay. Um, yeah, you can do it here itself. You can just click on sign in. And then it will also be change. Sign in. Okay. So my account. There you go. User's account, the password was wrong or the account was inactive? Which caused this? Uh, there was no password on the account. <laughs> oh, okay. That's why it was uh, not active. Oh, okay. So it should be good. It's been integrated? Correct. Um, so one other question uh, where it showed over here, like, you know how it showed the Okta page? Should it not do that when we when we initially do it or sh is that how it should be done? 
Like, I didn't get your question. So we went to the identity URL, right? That to log into Salesforce. Yeah. Um, and but then when you put in that identity URL, it brought us to the Okta login page. You were saying that it would bring, it would show another page that would ask us to sign. Yes. In. Yes, it should show another page until we remove the login form from the authentication settings. So uh, while doing the integration, we went to my domain and we went to authentication configuration and we checked the Okta training, right? There, uh, another checkbox was already checked called login form. So if we have unchecked that, then only it should not show that. So I think you unchecked that. Oh, I unchecked it, okay. Uh, but it's and, fine though. And uh, you said that was in Salesforce, right? Or not in the Okta? Yeah. Okay, it was in right. That was not in Okta. Okay. That is an application side behavior, so it should be in Salesforce. Okay. Thank you for your help. I'm sorry for holding everybody up. <laughs> it beats only. No, no problem. That's good. Um, All right. Mm -hmm. So go ahead, please. No, no, it, it was a good learning experience yeah and uh, so once you try you will understand more and tomorrow we will see that when this authentication happened what was the messages exchange between okta and salesforce currently we just saw the authentication happening but we did not see the actual message so the sam address which you downloaded in your prerequisite that's where we will make use of it tomorrow Yeah. All right, uh, team. Thank you for joining today, and we'll again connect tomorrow. Okay. Hey, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Thank you for your time yeah. and your thank help. You. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Hey, uh, Sumit. The uh, what did you want me to name today's session?